Alright guys, time to grab it back again today, hope you are all doing well and enjoying your day so far and the kickoff classic has just concluded the six exhibition matches we have had this weekend are just finished, finishing off with of course the Optic Chicago versus the Los Angeles Thieves in a very interesting matchup we're going to talk about the second. The first matchup of the Saturday was Dallas Empire New York Subliners, that was a 3-0, Optic Chicago closed out in a similar fashion, every other matchup went to a game five as we're going to discuss today, many storylines to glean from this that I'm sure we will look into in more detail over the coming days tweet to hear your big takeaways in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. The CDL season beginning officially on February the 11th, only a few days away, so make sure you do not miss any content coming out on this channel over the coming weeks. Firstly then, London Royal Ravens versus the Paris Legion. Of course, Scraps versus his former team and well, it wasn't exactly the best series for him but Paris Legion do end up coming out on top in a game 5, very much down to the wire. Waskin says as well, of course, with his brother playing right now, main AR, you know where to find me, but it didn't seem like they needed another main AR as Aqua was absolutely frying over the course of this series. 33 and 18 here on map number one, Garrison, uh, well, Harpoint, to close out this map. Game number two, though, goes in the favor of the London Royal Ravens here. Also, we get into this control, and Zero clutches a nice round here against Aqua when he, well, Aqua, one of his few moments where he actually failed to, well, clutch up in a big pressure situation. So it was unfortunate for Zero, of course, playing from London. I mean, um, obviously, fried him in this gunfight, which was pretty impressive, but all things considered, a pretty bad and forth series, as I think a lot of people were expecting, but maybe Aqua and, uh, well, the Paris Legion more generally looking somewhat more impressive than people were expecting on the whole. Then, um, well, it goes all the way to a game five session destroy. Paris Legion taken on Miami session destroy, as Tubuck Thug Lord says, who was, uh, well, the S&D analyst over at Chicago Huntsman last season, now no longer the case. Some of the S&D I've seen this weekend has been absolutely atrocious, my lord. But, uh, well, Paris Legion do manage to make it work in the end, as I say. Just to show much, let me just uh, change the screen real quick so we can see it all there. This is over at GG breaking point, so 6-3 in that final session destroy. Classic as a nice final map, and over the course of the series, Fire was looking very good as well. Let me just uh, well share this real quick. So Aqua with a 1.38, Fire with a 1.2 over the course of the series, and well, impressive stuff from the Paris Legion, all things considered. Getting one over on their European rivals and scraps, despite a pretty lackluster series by his standards, manages to get the job done. Second series of the day was Toronto Ultra versus the Minnesota Rocker. This was a team that I talked about, the fact is, okay, their, um, their hard point supposedly is pretty damn good. They should be solid in that game mode, but actually it was the Ultra that were dominating the hard points. Bance came out game number one, went like 37 in 22 or something outrageous, completely demolished people. And this was pretty impressive, right? Because a lot of people were looking at this squad last season saying, look, was Classic the right guy to drop? Bance maybe was the weakest member of that team, but typically very good on trail games, to be honest. And well, this time was no exception. He was absolutely frying game one here with the M4. And well, he was double positive. Or actually, is uh, well, the nameless says he was pretty much double positive. Two of his teammates were double neg and they still take the win on this game number one. But Minnesota were a very, very disciplined team. Their search and destroy is very impressive indeed. Major Maniac phenomenal all through the series and they make it work on the game two search and destroy clutching up here on Moscow six to four. They take it into the control. They win that one as well. Then we go to the game four hard point though and it seems like, okay, Minnesota maybe have found their stride here. Was a very, very close series though. A very back and forth one indeed. But as Austin says, 70 and 40 was Bance in the whole of the hard points, right? In the second hard point as well. This guy was absolutely absolutely going off. They win that one, take it to a game five, all the way down to the wire. Game five, round 11, doesn't get any better than that. The Liga, well, certainly wanted to chalk my sleep schedule even more than it already is, taking us all the way to the distance. And well, Minnesota Rock Up make it work just about in the end. They almost throw this one away, this beautiful graphic here from GG Breaking Point. The Lion Man put together as well, as you can see. Toronto Ultra made the big comeback towards the end, but didn't quite work out for them. Minnesota Rock Up close out, and of course, defense on our garrison and um, touch and destroy at the current time is very, very strong indeed. So 5-2 comeback could have happened, didn't happen in the end, but oh well, certainly could have been something that got this squad over the line. But as we saw, Rocker close it out. Certainly a series which was somewhat closer than I was expecting it to be. I thought it could be a good one. I thought it could be something like a 3-1, but Toronto Ultra looking very good. And honestly, all these matchups we've seen this weekend, of course, look, they've only played up against one team. Maybe Ultra is, uh, well, maybe Minnesota Rockers are a super good team and they match up particularly closely with the Toronto Ultra or, you know, many things can be going on. And of course, it's very exciting to see exactly
exactly what might happen in a few weeks time when the league does officially kick off we get to see these guys playing against other teams and see how those matchups might develop over time but very much a back and forth one here difficult to choose between these two squads game five round 11 doesn't get too much better than that and as you can see right here so Bance well this is the final selection show but you can see all the scoreboards across the series right at the top here and Priester and Maniac that game five attached basically how to do nothing typically a bit of an ice man but so yeah accuracy with a big kill in that final round Major Maniac had a pretty disgusting play as well early on for them to help close out that map so here we go just before the final series of the day they did the group draw for the stage one so this is pretty interesting I'll talk about this in more detail tomorrow but just to touch on it real quick group A is Dallas sent by Los Angeles Thieves Minnesota Rock and New York Subliners London Royal Ravens and the Seattle Surge most people would probably say group B is stronger at least on the current evidence LAG looked solid so did Paris Asian Mutineers of course looked very good up against FaZe and we know FaZe are going to be good Optic Chicago looked phenomenal in the series we're just about to look at and Ultra looked very very solid as well against the Minnesota Rocker so well we'll talk about that in more detail in tomorrow's video as well as uh, what Optic Chicago say just before their match right here well as I say Cotter but they're in the lab right all these guys next to each other on this setup really really cool to see and I'm sure well other teams are looking to do a similar thing in the near future as well as Skump says just before their match it will be an interesting test but I am certainly excited for it though and um well maybe from their perspective they didn't feel it was actually that much of a test at the end of the day because a 3-0 whitewash in this one starting off on this map number one very close map early on Los Angeles Thieves had a slight early advantage but Optic Gaming bring it back resoundingly towards the end Dashi was absolutely frying over that top bridge area and honestly Chicago just brought a massive lead in this one I think Kenny got a pretty wacky spawn over towards the next uh, rotation on from this and uh, well that gave LA Thieves an opportunity to get back into the series but it doesn't happen and Optic Chicago close out with a very very impressive indeed and um, well at least on the slang side of things right as you can see right here they very much pulled away in the middle part of this game this honestly was something that uh, well Optic Gaming of old kind of that uh, the legendary dynasty squads used to do they would have a close match early on and then when things got tricky they would pull away from their opponents we saw that right here well maybe that is a sign of things to come going forwards and as you can see plus 25 in the slaying department right here Scump was plus 11 Dashi was plus 9 Formal was plus 8 and Envoy was just sitting there not really doing too much because the slaying on the Los Angeles Thieves was nowhere to be found for the most of it then we go into game 2 we reach 100,000 viewers pretty impressive as I say given this is effectively a scrim obviously there's more to it than that but this match doesn't count for anything it's not a tournament final or anything right imagine this was a tournament final you would imagine we would have had a fair few more viewers than, uh, than we got for this one so 100,000 viewers pretty good all things consider there wasn't too much in-game promotion and stuff for this and I imagine going forwards the viewership is only going to increase over time but very spicy matchup early on that goes into the search and destroy and well this was a very back and forth affair looked like Optic Chicago were going to close it out in a more comfortable fashion than they did the um, the trophy system that Slasher well put down and then it killed him with obviously it wasn't ideal for their chances and um, well there was a pretty disgusting clip as well from Envoy right here where Temp is trying to make a nice little flank and Envoy just completely destroys him pretty unfortunate for Temp the way that can happen sometimes they, you got to get blocked by the stairs right there but so yeah not a gunfight you really want to be losing and Envoy gets the job done gives them that 4-3 advantage and they go on to close out the game in a 6-4 fashion taking it then to a raid control a game mode which Optic Chicago clearly are very comfortable in and uh, well they honestly go on to pretty much dominate the rest of the series as we will see in the coming minutes here so they close out this search and destroy 6-4 very much as you see a back and forth affair not really too many bombs going down in this one all things considered they were basically playing it like TDM and there's certainly more of a discussion to be had tomorrow about where the smokes should come back in some form or another given that search and destroy this was pretty intense one but when the when the games aren't maybe so intense it can get pretty dull to what you could argue at times then we go into this control envoy after having a relatively quiet map number one map two is pretty solid for him then he goes into game three and absolutely smokes the opposition here he is 11 in zero at the start another 11 streak and um, so many 11 streaks i feel these last couple of days which is honestly really impressive like a few years ago we would never see something like this really not like never but um, in this 4v4 environment with no stim like we used to have in Black Ops 4 clutches are much more possible these long streaks are much more possible it's just a greater well it's a much greater environment I believe to watch than it was back in the day so Envoy has a great start to this map and well they're closing out in a pretty resounding fashion 3-0 that map number 2 or that round number 2 sorry where Dashi somehow clutched up with like one life on the clock that was pretty ridiculous and um, well Control certainly showing it's a very enjoyable experience to watch compared to you can argue domination from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 
warfare. As Scump says, GG's 100 Thieves, good way to start with a 3-0 victory this season. Of course, as I say, it doesn't count. I believe it was pretty much a year ago today where I think Crone tweeted it out that, uh, well, it was the Optic Chicago versus Dallas Empire with that, uh, well, first Minnesota launch weekend home series type of thing where Scump was, well, screaming across the main stage at Crim6. That was a pretty good time. This time, of course, things are, well, dialed down somewhat. Effectively, just a practice match at the end of the day. But certainly, you can look at Optic Chicago right here and the other teams that we looked at that played their matches and say, well, this team looked very, very good, right? Because Dallas Empire yesterday looked incredibly strong up against a New York Subliners team, which maybe is pretty disjointed, right? Not so good. Whereas, uh, well, the Optic Chicago performance right here against Los Angeles Thieves, that's a team that, well, they've got a coach in place for quite a while now. They've been playing with each other for a very long time. Those are players that tend to get better over time. So I certainly did expect Optic Chicago to come out and win this series. Maybe not quite as resoundingly, though, as they ended up doing. It was pretty much the most dominant series of the entire weekend in a series which you may have expected to be one of the closer ones going into the weekend. But yeah, pretty interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. These were the final results right here, at least in the control. So 250, 136, 64, 30 in the end. And in the control, Envoy here with the 1.75 KD formal doing bits as well from Texas. I mean, he was pretty phenomenal this entire series as well. And as Chrome says, really, just to finish off our discussion for today, we are in for a great year. There's certainly some issues with the game right now. The smokes, the snipers, search and destroy. Maybe we will talk about that tomorrow. But all things considered, maybe the Codecaster could be upgraded somewhat. Certainly some nitpicky things that we could look at. But comparing where we are this year to where we are last year, it is absolutely night and day, especially in terms of how much the pros are enjoying the game. And I believe the viewership is going to continue to reflect that going forwards. Intrigued to hear your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm that you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time.